Good morning. My name is Gil Cohen. I'm the CEO of Comsec, and uh, welcome to my lecture uh, called "The Plumber You Have a Leak in Your Name Pipe." This lecture was also uh, uh, presented in the last DEFCON, Las Vegas. Um, some of you might have uh, seen it. If you don't, please be. Stay tuned. So um, uh, my lecture uh, will uh, focus on a forgotten interface uh, that is uh, largely unfamiliar even by veteran penetration testers and uh, information security consultants. Uh, and I'm going to show you what, uh, is the, uh, what can be done with named pipes and how can you, you can exploit it in order to hack into a cool Windows application and stuff. So we'll start with some uh, uh, present. I'm going to present myself, and then I'm going to talk about some key terms. If you are not familiar with uh, uh, with Windows named pipes and remote uh, call, uh, remote protocol call, and um, many other uh, key terms, uh, then I'm going to show you the basics: how to connect to name type pipe, uh, what are name pipe ACLs, uh, and uh, uh, many cool uh, tools that we found during the research that we were doing. Uh, then I'm going to uh, show you some uh, exploitation uh, and fuzzing and we'll end with uh, a demo of three vulnerable uh, Windows applications that we found and uh, you might heard of some of it uh, and I'm going to show you how I'm, I'm performing denial of service and remote command injection using named pipes. So let's start. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm in the business for around 13 years and uh, now I started in 2005 uh, in uh, IDF uh, and, uh, and currently I'm in Comsec for about two years. I'm the CEO of uh, Comsec for two years now. Uh, I was a developer uh, before I went into uh, information security uh, and as a developer I knew absolutely nothing about security. And, uh, in 2005 I made the shift and uh, ever since I'm a, a, a hacker, a, mostly focused on application. Uh, this is what OSC is all about, but not only. I also hacked into networks and uh, uh, Internet of Things. Some of you might see me in the Channel 2 uh, article uh, about uh, hacking into uh, smart uh, uh, homes. Uh, and uh, so uh, hacking is my passion. Uh, I, I don't think there's, there's anyone in here that is not familiar with Comsec, but just in case there is a single person Comsec is the most veteran and biggest company in Israel, uh, uh, information security consultant company. We are celebrating our 30, uh, year, 30 years uh, birthday uh, this year, uh, and we have uh, multiple clients in multiple countries. So this is about Comsec. So let's begin with some key terms of what name pipes uh, is. Let's start with inter-process communication, or IPC. Inter-process communication is a technique that allows uh, multiple processes and application to share the data with one, uh, with each, each other and communicate. Uh, there are clients and servers and uh, each application can act as both clients and service at the same time. Uh, the server listens, the clients connect to it and sends information. And very similar to web-based uh, web uh, uh, architecture. Uh, and Windows Nate Pipes is a form of inter-process communication. Uh, this is the Windows implementation, the Microsoft implementation of inter-process communication. Uh, and it allows you to connect uh, between uh, applications. Some of you might know it from uh, um, SQL Server. If you ever uh, went to uh, SQL Server administrative uh, interface, the configuration manager, you would see that uh, you can uh, enable name pipe communication. Mostly you use TCP IP regular communication to connect to your uh, uh, SQL database, but you can also enable name pipe communication. Uh, this is when I mention uh, name pipes, and I mentioned this example, everybody uh, are like, oh yeah, now I remember there is something that, called, that is called name pipes. So this is probably the most common uh, usage uh, of uh, name pipe, or at least uh, the common place to see it. So, uh, Windows Name Pipes uh, is a communication interface. It can either be a half duplex or full duplex, meaning you can connect from uh, mostly it's uh, a full duplex, um, and uh, it utilizes a unique uh, file system uh, that is called, unsurprisingly, NPFS, Name Pipes File System. 
a, any process can, can access name pipes as long as you have the proper permissions. I'm going to discuss it later on about name pipes ACLs. And all in instances uh, are uh, um, sharing the same uh, pipe name. If you have a pipe that is called GIL, everyone that wants to connect to it will access GIL and will have a pipe instance called GIL. So uh, it's basically similar to uh, sockets, uh, TCP IP communication, but uh, um, it is based on a unique file system instead. So uh, there are many configurations of name pipes, half duplex or full duplex, byte oriented, packet oriented, local or network. And this is something that is largely unfamiliar by information uh, security uh, consultants. Uh, if you do know name pipes, you would probably think of it as local only. Inter-process communication suggests that this is a local only interface, but this is not the case. You can, in fact, connect to a name pipe remotely. And this is what this lecture is all about. A uh, named pipe uses, if you want to connect remotely to a name pipe, uh, you can do it with either uh, these uh, two ports either the SMB port, uh, which is used for file sharing usually, or remote procedure call, RPC port, uh, port 135. So if you're not familiar with uh, these uh, services, RPC, remote procedure call, this is a protocol that allows one program to invoke services from other programs uh, that is located in another computer. Uh, this is usually used by Windows to uh, Windows itself to communicate uh, between uh, two computers, so, or for example, to, community, to communicate to your domain controller. Um, and it uses port 135, TCP or UDP. There is another variant of RPC, which is called DCE RPC, which is Distributed Computing Environment Remote Procedure Call. Uh, this is a, just a variant of RPC that uh, uh, mimics a local procedure call. The programmer that uses DCE RPC uh, addresses a function as if it is a local function, but in fact it is a remote one. So this is a DC RPC, and this is what uh, a remote name pipe connection actually uses, DC RPC variation. SMB, you're probably all familiar with SMB, even if you don't know what it is, because you use it for file sharing. If you ever used just plain file sharing, slash, slash, server name, slash, share name, file name, etc., you used SMB. So SMB is server message block. It can be used for other purposes, uh, in fact. Uh, not many know it, but you can use it for uh, printers, communication, serial ports, and others. And it uses port 445, TCP only. Uh, so this is uh, two ports. You're probably most, most of you are familiar with it. There are other types of named pipes, which is called unnamed pipes, or anonymous pipes. Named pipes are pipes with actual names, you can connect to it using it names. Unnamed pipe are local pipes that are allocated dynamically. If you want uh, um, just uh, uh, one application to, con to connect to another one uh, as a temporary uh, connection, uh, you can use unnamed pipes and uh, this is actually a named pipe with random name. Uh, and as soon as the connection is closed, unlike uh, regular named pipes, the unnamed pipes is also closed. But uh, this is not uh, something I, I found interest, uh, interesting during our research because uh, these are local only. And we focused on main pipes which are remotely accessible. So how would you connect to an end pipe? Let's see a few interesting tools. Um, but first, uh, uh, the technique itself. Um, you, you cannot mount an end pipe using a, a regular SMB connection. You cannot just write slash slash server name slash pipe and name pipe in your Windows run uh, and run a command uh, interface. You need to do it using specialized tools or using program. Uh, but uh, you basically use it very similar in a very similar way to a, a remote SMB share. So you can see that uh, you can uh, you need to write the IP address slash pipe and the pipe name. And this is the, the way you connect to a main pipe. If you want to connect to a local name pipe, you can do it with 127.001 or simply dot. 
Very simple. And the most common uh, or uh, the most uh, advanced tool that is working with uh, main pipes is IO Ninja. Using our, uh, during our research, we found this uh, tool and uh, we found it uh, to be the first, very first tool that also allow um, um, sniffing name pipes content. I'm going to show it to you live later on. So uh, this is a very uh, useful tool. It's Swiss Army knife of uh, communication. It also allows you to open sockets and many other uh, features, but name pipes is, is the real strength of this tool because this is the only tool that allows you uh, things that uh, usually only uh, proxy or a Wireshark allows, but for name pipes. Uh, this is not a free tool, by the way. You can download it for free uh, for evaluation purposes, uh, but eventually if you want to use it for uh, on long term, you'd have to buy it. Um, but you can, in fact, see name pipes communication in Wireshark. If you connect remotely to a name pipe, you would see uh, the communication in Wireshark. Uh, you can see that this is, in fact, presented as SMB2 communication, 